Well, thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to be able to interact with you today and present this uh, uh, webinar on concept intervention to enhance uh, school readiness. Um, okay, we'll, we will certainly begin with the importance of basic concepts uh, that are applied across all areas of learning. Um, my de definition or my focus uh, of, on basic concepts is on relational concepts such as more and less and same and different that are used across all areas of learning. And they are certainly important for language and cognitive development. They're used in every area of school learning. They're essential to following directions and classroom routines, and they certainly are building blocks for problem solving and thinking. Um, the relational concepts that I'm really focusing on, such as right and left, and same and different, and more and less, their understanding changes over time. Um, as children acquire these uh, concepts, they may be familiar with them uh, or one member of the concept in a uh, pair such as uh, top and bottom, um, then they know they may know something about the concept and not the concept term for a variety of reasons, like they may have never heard it in their um, experiences. Um, then they tend to learn one member of a concept pair such as top, um, and then they might confuse it with another member of the con of the pair, which is bottom. And finally, they'll learn both members of a, the concept pair. And as I will be demonstrating, I think a little later on, that these same concepts can be used at increasing levels of uh, complexity. So learning a concept is not an all or none uh, uh, situation. It takes place over time. It begins in the early childhood years and it continues uh, well into second grade or above as certainly is true with right and left, which is a very hard concept when you have uh, cross laterality and you're sitting in across the table from someone and want to identify their right or left uh, hand uh, or something else that might be of importance. <clears throat> so this is kind of an overview of transfers more likely to take place if the child uses a concept name and has experience with the objects. Naming is really, really important. Uh, so it's not simply pointing to or identifying an object that is essential. Certainly feedback from all educators and special educators or speech language pathologists um, is really, really important. And that including uh, prompts or examples that are familiar to the child and, and encouraging um, the comments that the child might be willing to make. What I think is really important that we will be exploring later on is learning a concept in one context does not necessarily mean the child can use it in another. So children need to have lots of practice with activities in different contexts. For example, the concepts same and different are used in all contexts, in the context of time, in the context of space, in uh, the concept of quantity, uh, the concept in feelings, how you might feel and I might feel. It's used across all contexts. 
So a child might be able to learn a concept in one concept uh, context, but not be able to apply it to another. So one of our goals will be to uh, encourage children to use concepts across the different contexts and in, in their everyday language. Certainly the learning of basic concepts such as more and less and uh, beginning and end uh, facilitates the learning of new concepts and it is an important co uh, component component of uh, problem solving. Here are a few concepts that children generally master at the four years age of level. You'll be able to review this, so I'm not gonna read through all of them. And some of them are still developing at the end of pre-kindergarten for many children, such as together and down, even though uh, that's one of the earlier vocabulary terms that children tend to learn. And here are some of the ones that are still uh, developing um, at uh, during and at the end of uh, kindergarten year for a variety of reasons, um, which I hope I have the opportunity to uh, share with you. A number of things are really important and influence the uh, age and the, the development at which uh, through which children learn these concepts. The enriched early language exchanges facilitates the ease with which children learn concepts and the work of Hart and Risley in the past has certainly um, demonstrated this. The more talk that parents tend to, or caregivers tend to uh, give an exchange with children, uh, the more language they're likely to learn. And they learn a lot of different things like turn-taking in the language uh, exchanges that are provided and so forth. And it doesn't matter uh, what background the child comes from, uh, these early exchanges um, are really important. However, children come to school with varying, varying types and degrees of language practice. And some of the forms that in language uh, that children have experienced are the forms that children want, uh, that schools want, but others do uh, do not match that uh, that process. For example, have children learned to name pictures? Have they learned who, what, where, why, and when questions? These are all some of the many early experiences that. Uh, many children have and some children um, do not have for a variety of reasons uh, such as parents who are very young themselves and don't know about the importance of all of these questions or uh, parents who or caregivers who are overwhelmed with just meeting the needs of uh, their everyday lives. So children may perform poorly on the tasks that they're given in school or the uh, assessment devices that are provided the, uh, to them because they're unfamiliar with the format of the directions or the tasks. And it's essential that the poor performance um, on these that may occur on these uh, assessment devices are not misinterpreted as language delay or a lack of re readiness skills. These areas certainly need to be explored. So as you've already been thinking about or can be thinking about, 
Relational concepts are used across all areas of learning, reading, math, science, writing, following directions, following uh, problem solving, play skills, sports, music, and everything, everything uh, young people engage in. They're certainly related to time and sequence. It can be uh, a car that is at the beginning or the end of the line, or what happened at the beginning or end of a story, or what's happened at the beginning and the end of a child's own daily experience and so forth. They're related to position in space, such as near and far away. And what happens when uh, you hear a, a car or a train or whatever it is come closer to you or a person who's in farther away and you can't quite hear them speaking to you and so forth. They're used to describe quantity and count to make comparisons such as more and less, few, same, and many. And this really becomes really uh, uh, very challenging uh, for uh, many young people as it, they're used in uh, across uh, a different context. Let's take, for example, uh, quantity and and the terms of more and less. If we have countable objects, uh, one can explore them. If we're dealing with liquids and looking at the containers uh, that hold these liquids, it becomes more challenging to uh, think about which container holds more or less uh, liquid. So they're certainly related to speed and size and distance, and they're related to books. I'll be exploring some of this a little bit more as we uh, move through uh, the webinar today. Um, and they're certainly related to sound and emotions, um, such as high and low sounds, or as I feel the same way as I think you do, or um, I'm giving an adult expression, a, a child certainly wouldn't be able to express it in that same way. They're, whoops, they're certainly used among uh, the goals uh, detailed by uh, the Common Core and state and uh, local guidelines. And these certainly have been outlined by Bracken and Crawford in a, a 50 state review that was uh, uh, published in 2010. So uh, if you wanna explore the those, uh, you might wanna reference, uh, go to that particular reference. So as we've kind of outlined already, relational concepts are used across all uh, academic uh, areas. Certainly in mathematics, they're used in terms of numbers and quantities and measuring. And let's look at uh, making comparisons and ordering. I could ask you to find the uh, flower pot with uh, the most flowers in it or with uh, more flowers than one but not the most, I can make these questions much, much more challenging. And they are for young people as they um, move through different experiences in life. So they're used across all of these different areas in the mathematical area. Um, the same thing is true uh, with, uh, following directions that are presented. Um, and test directions can follow, uh, can incorporate many of these uh, basic uh, relational uh, concepts. And it's certainly important, I'm, I'm not gonna read through all the examples that are on the page for you, but I want you to think of what is 
included in the directions that are being, if you are using assessment devices uh, used uh, with the students that you are working with. You know, you can have an example of how are these two things the same? And then in one test that I reviewed later on in the, the, the test uh, instruction to the student, the question was used, how are these two things alike? Well, a student who knows same might not know that the word alike. So they may not have been successful in following that particular direction. So the important thing to think about is to what extent students are familiar with the relational concepts or the other terms that are being used in the direction. And if they're not familiar with these uh, relational concepts, then they're not gonna be necessarily successful in following the direction. And many times they're being tremendously challenged uh, in uh, complying with the directions that are provided. Obviously, if they're challenged in following these directions, the outcomes of the assessment um, uh, procedures being used are not gonna have a great deal of value and they may give you uh, those false negatives or the false positives about the students that you are working with. Okay, why are some of these relational concepts uh, so challenging for many individuals? And it's because they refer to a broad variety of situations in everyday life. Many of them are used across context, such as space, quantity, and time. And as I've indicated earlier, learning a concept in one context does not mean the student can apply it in another context. And they are used at many levels of difficulty from concrete uh, to abstract. I believe the picture you're seeing on the page, one of mine is covered up, um, is of a chair. So if the student is asked to uh, stand in back of the chair, uh, uh, that uh, is uh, more readily complied with because the back of the chair is there to uh, serve as a reference point. But if a student is asked to stand in back of a table, where is the back of the table? It depends on where the speaker is and where the student is. Uh, so that is uh, a, a, an important consideration. So that the kinds of objects used, as I've indicated before, are important as so it's countable and non-countable, um, the context uh, in which it's used, and possibly the overlap of similar words one of which they uh, a student might be familiar with and another one they are uh, not as familiar with, such as fewest and least and same and as and alike, as I pointed out a little bit earlier. Okay, so we've kind of identified the issues that are uh, important in identifying the front and back of objects with defi defined uh, front and back and um, others that depends on the perspective of the viewer. Okay, how can assessment results be used to guide parents and teachers when giving directions uh, uh, to uh, children? Okay. Children who lack the understanding of relational concepts are going to have uh, challenges when following directions and, the fo and following the content of learning activities. 
assessment of relational concepts early on in the school year, and we're still there for many of you, it is important to determine the concepts that are difficult for many children and should be embedded into instruction and as well as identify relational concepts that are uh, difficult for individual children and that can be focused on in the classroom and for more intensive and individualized activities. One measure, the measure that I've developed, the BAME test of basic concepts, um, focuses on these relational uh, concepts that are so important across all areas of learning. The major function of this test is to identify gaps in learning where intervention can take place early on in the school year where we are right now and which aligns with early childhood curricular materials and benchmarks. One of the um, important uh, features of my instrument is that norms um, uh, of the test are available in both English and in Spanish. So there are two levels of the instrument. The preschool age instrument assesses 22 six uh, basic concepts and information and norms are available at by six uh, month intervals. One of the things that I've done in this instrument is to include uh, two items uh, per concept to identify so a child might get one or of those two items right or both of them or none of them uh, correct. So we might be um, uh, dealing with a, a concept that is emerging if one of the uh, items is correct or one of the scenes that are portrayed uh, in the question is more familiar with the child or they're not able to use it in either of the two items that are presented. Uh, so this is a special feature of the preschool version of the test that's not available uh, on many other assessment devices that are used in the field. The school age version assesses 50 basic relational concepts. Um, norms are available for both at the kindergarten level at both uh, fall and spring. Um, it allows for pre and post-testing uh, post -testing, uh, to assess within year progress. It can be group or individually administered. It's available in, uh, in Spanish and in English, and the norms are available in Spanish and uh, English as well. I focused already on this point of the BAME preschool. Whoops. Um, okay, for the K to two level, uh, a class record form is available so that uh, the assessor can review uh, the uh, performance of the entire class and to identify concepts that are difficult uh, for some children or for many children and should be embedded in ongoing instruction. Um, as along with the concepts that are difficult for each child and might want to be focused on in more intense um, individualized instruction that many of you might be uh, uh, presenting. I hope that um, assessors will also review the errors that uh, uh, children make. Uh, many of them being that they, and I've tried to build this into a, what's available on the response form. Some children mark everything, or some children um, mark the opposite of the targeted uh, concept. Uh, so one begin, can begin to understand uh, what's going on with children if one reviews the errors that they uh, make. And we'll follow up on that in a few minutes. 
the parent perform, uh, uh, form that's given back to parents um, includes, and I think making the bridges to and, uh, and connecting the parents is so, so vital. Every concept that is assessed on the test is indicated on the uh, report forms that are provided back to a parent. So the test is totally transparent. There is nothing else that's on the test except those concepts that are uh, indicated along with um, an indication of the areas in which children are having difficulty. Hope parent, uh, on the parent forms are also suggestions that are provided by me or that can be by, provided by you as the uh, uh, assessors um, in, that parents can pick up um, on at home. And it's also very useful to then get feedback from the parents to see, well, maybe the child can use the concept at home in a familiar activity that you weren't able to uh, tap on with the assessment um, device that you're using. So it will be really important to identify those concepts the child is missing um, and that might impede with their academic success and across the areas that are being worked on in the classroom. And certainly these uh, relational concepts uh, are essential for following uh, directions of increasing length and complexity, many of which continue to be uh, challenging for adults. Like I needed to give a, a taxi driver turn left at the traffic light, then turn right at the stop sign and left at the next street, which is which led to the residence in which I was uh, living. That's a difficult direction to remember all the components of. I learned down the road I needed to break that direction down into steps, um, which is an important component of direction following. So an integrated uh, assessment process then will be to assess an entire class at kindergarten to grade one level. If you're working with preschoolers, it's certainly the same thing applies at that age level as well. A second step is to observe children of concern in ongoing uh, classroom activities. Uh, so maybe they're able to comply uh, with a particular concept term in a familiar activity such, such as stand in line at the door, who is the first person in line. It might be something that is familiar uh, to them in that, or that one can build into using these terms in the everyday uh, classroom activities. I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, uh, conducting a brief strategy interview because it's really important to learn what what their children are using a successful or less successful um, strategies in uh, solving the problems that are being presented to them, not only on the uh, an assessment device, but across activities that they may be engaged in. And the importance of a mini interview and probably um, uh, a, a practice item uh, in order for you to develop intervention activities and to chart progress. So our goal is then to identify uh, relational concepts that are difficult for the class as a whole or for individual children. Uh, 
to observe kids of concern in ongoing classrooms uh, activities, and also to think about in what ways relational concepts are embedded into classroom routines and activities so that uh, a lot of practices being provided with these uh, concepts in everyday activities and uh, certainly using them across the different uh, contexts and activities which um, one might be engaged in in the uh, teaching. Okay, sometimes it's useful to interview a child by selecting like one or two uh, correct items and one or two uh, uh, items that were challenging for a child uh, and trying to figure out how they solved a problem. How did you figure that out? How did you know it was right? Have you ever heard this term before or word before? Um, whatever question might seem appropriate uh, to you in the situation that you are working with so that one can begin to uh, identify the sources of uh, error in the uh, or emerging concepts. Perhaps the child only focuses on one uh, picture in an item that's be, being presented or the first thing that you said and not the whole direction that you are providing uh, for the child or only the last thing that you mentioned in a particular uh, direction. Oh, so one needs to think about uh, areas that might be informative uh, to you, such as attention to the direction, the memory load, the language the direction is being uh, presented in. Is it in the child's home language or is it in English? It might be possible that the child might know the term in their home, home language, but not in English. The nature of We'll move on from that, the nature of the testing situation, the lack of ever having heard the word before um, uh, in uh, the child's experience as well as talk cognitive process. So uh, the interview can give you information and a mini, mini teach might give you an information uh, information as well. For example, uh, if you want to uh, find out if the child uh, knew the knows the word middle, and you can be using cars or other familiar terms the uh, child uh, might be familiar uh, with. Um, let me give you an example um, uh, of this. I had the experience of working with a child who did not know, which is included on the school age version of the test, the relational concept pair. So I explained to the child, pair is two of a kind. You carry pairs with you all of the time. You have pairs of ears, pairs of eyes, pairs of hands, pairs of teeth, and immediately the child caught on. He had not heard the term pairs before, and he was able to respond to a, a, an alternate form of uh, the question asking about the terms, uh, the term pair, and he was very excited because he knew he had all these pairs that he carried with him all of the time. Um, so <clears throat> there are lots of fun things that can be done and I'm sure, and I hope you uh, 
might exchange with me some of the fun things that you've done um, to help uh, the students that you work with learn these uh, relational uh, concepts or other concepts that are important to them um, in their life. So it's important to assess progress. I mean, here in terms of near and far, there are many levels of using um, this term. Uh, so one can chart progress that so you can move body parts near and far from each other. Kids can move near and far from each other. Uh, children, something special happens when you near move near, nearer to and farther away from a mirror as your image becomes larger or your image becomes smaller. You can think about uh, near and far uh, in relationship to people or uh, friends and grandparents that you can't see who live very, very far away from you and who you might uh, feel very uh, attached to and you might miss them very much. So it relates to your emotional feelings uh, as well. So here I also spoke about nearer and farther and it can be nearest and uh, closest to overlapping terms or farthest away uh, uh, from you. So uh, that is what's really important for us to begin to think about. So one of the things that uh, we want to think about is uh, how we can help uh, children uh, learn basic concepts. Um, one of the things that is important to, uh, to think about is that the development of a rich understanding of relational concepts takes place over, con over time. So it can begin at the preschool years uh, with the concept of, as I indicated earlier, right and left, and identifying your right hand and your right foot. And then you have to think about your right side and your left side, and of course, as uh, if you were to have a child change positions in the room, what's to the right side of them and the left side of them changes. So it becomes much more challenging as you can engage in these kinds of games. And then, of course, uh, cross laterality, which doesn't develop in, in many uh uh, children until they're in second grade. And there's a good research uh, literature that um, uh, details that. So as these concepts are used at increasing levels of complexity, they're essential for language development and cognitive development, and certainly for following directions and interacting with others. Um, here's a fun example that uh, I think of, if you think of top and bottom, we can, you think of the top and the bottom of the of a jar, these can be reversed, the jar can be tipped upside down or it can be tipped to the side uh, and you can place an object um, on top of uh, the jar. And I a fun example uh, uh, is to think of a, a, a doll or yourself um, and placing it on top of the bed. And I like to make up rhythms and rhymes uh, that can help get the uh, concept uh, into the child's uh, long-term memory, like the top of your head and the bottom of your feet are still the same when you are fast asleep. Uh, and which is true. So they're on top of the bed, the top of the head, the bottom of your feet. And so it might, it's different from when you're standing up and whatever it is necessary to get into the child's long-term uh, memory. Uh, so for me, a comprehensive 
uh, approach to teaching uh, basic concepts uh, needs to uh, take in many steps. These are appropriate for older learners as well as uh, for uh, uh, children. And it's so important to begin at the sensory level. If so, if children can feel the top and bottom of things or feel the top and bottom of their heads and so forth, then then move to concrete examples and then two dimensional uh, examples. It's particularly important uh, to encourage kids not only to name the top and bottom of pictures, but to use uh, these terms in their everyday uh, uh, talk and in the activities in which they uh, engage. It's so important, and from my perspective, to help kids form a mental picture of this or an adult for that as, as well. What's going to stick in their memory? If you blow a balloon bigger and bigger, until it pops, that will remain possibly in their memory bank. What is it that you can do to help get these relational concepts into children's long-term memory that they can draw on in later experiences? So certainly I've discussed how important they are to expressing one's emotions. They're essential tools for thinking and problems. They're important from comparing which is the biggest, the smallest, the middle size, sequencing events, what happened at the beginning or the end of the story, or the beginning at the end of a baseball game, baseball being in season uh, right now in many locations, for classifying all of the things that are large or are all of the things that I'm going to make it hard that are big, red, and under the, the table or on the top shelf. Um, one can increase the complexity of these by the number of conditions that you are um, presenting, such as in combination with other uh, concepts. So I'm trying to give you some of these examples, and I'm uh, trying to move through this with some speed so we can get to uh, other areas of the presentation. So certainly the types of questions that you will be asking to uh, elicit concepts are really important. What happened first? What happened before uh, another event happened, uh, which uh, boxes have the most balls in them? Where is a particular item? When did this happen in a story event? Who was there before uh, something else uh, took place? All of them need lots and lots of practice. And as indicated before, uh, alternative words might be used to help uh, the child describe uh, uh, different relationships. Okay, a child can be standing at the center or the middle of, the, of a circle or at the beginning of the line or first in line. So it's wonderful to provide lots of experiences using um, these uh, interchangeable words, as well as the target word you might be, term you might be uh, uh, interested in. So certainly as indicated, forming that mental picture is really so important. Um, so we wanna get, uh, help children gain representations of the concepts in, in the way they can remember. Uh, so remembering these terms and being able to apply them in uh, increasingly challenging 
uh, direction formats is so important. Okay, let's think about uh, some of the ways in which the uh, relational concepts uh, are, are used and why they uh, present challenges. The green tomato uh, can be to the right or to the left of a red tomato. Sorry, my tomatoes aren't perfect, but they were real tomatoes. Uh, the first toy a child puts in a box on one occasion can be uh, the last one on another occasion and so forth. They're really important for uh, problem signed, uh, solving and for sequencing. Let's say, let's put the teacups in order from the biggest to the smallest. Or uh, which, I'm gonna give a harder question, which cup is bigger than one, but smaller than another uh, one? Are the cups in order from smallest to largest or largest to smaller in this particular array here? Um, so, as we've indicated, they're used across all areas of, of learning and are so important for problem solving. So we can look at all the boxes that are uh, big, all that are long and red, and all long and red and underneath the uh, table. Uh, so you can see where this has immense, immense uh, implication for the directions that you are uh, presenting to the students that you were working with. And so where the goals might be uh, to prevent a three-step uh, direction, uh, these can be done with or without modeling or without a visual uh, prompt. Um, and at by third grade, they might at first grade they may be needed to follow uh, time tasks uh, and stop, circle the last problem that you did. That's pretty hard uh, for uh, to give. There are many to, types of directions that you are uh, likely to present. It's not the focus of this webinar. Uh, to detail all of these, even though I've uh, done that in previous webinars or could do it in future. Um, so one needs to think of the direction type. Um, it, it certainly, if it's an imperative, it has to be followed and you are likely to uh, use a different uh, tone of voice in presenting that kind of direction than you know, for one that is related to, uh, let's take turns now. So for directions, just like in any other uh, kind of learning, we need to get it into memory and help children hold it into memory, select the relevant information and get out a response and maintain uh, keywords in long-term memory. So what we need to think about, how many behaviors are involved in a direction, or the number of qualifiers that are in the direction, and the com grammatical complexity of the direction. Um, and to think about uh, the environmental uh, issues that might be present, such as distractions and other noises, uh, the hearing and vision of the uh, student, uh, the reinforcers that uh, you might be provided, and modeling uh, direction following through gun, uh, uh, fun game activities. So these are all of the things that uh, need to be uh, considered in direction following. Certainly children who are learning English as a second language are at an unfair uh, disadvantage. They may understand the direction in their home language. Um, and following uh, directions are 
certainly difficult for all students who present uh, special needs. Okay, I don't have uh, time to uh, uh, present the details of here, but you can review the slides of the presentations. The more behaviors in a direction, the harder they are to follow. The more qualifiers in a direction, the harder they are uh, to follow. And mm, a large number of the qualifiers in directions are relational concept uh, terms. And certainly relational concept mastery re predicts a student's ability to follow uh, direction. Working memory is really, really important, as was uh, identified in this uh, study by Engel, Karuler, and Collins. Um, so there's only so much all of us can hold in mind and to be able to follow uh, a direction. So one needs to, uh, and particularly the younger the child, uh, limit the the amount uh, or the number of steps uh, that need to be followed in a particular uh, direction. So uh, we need to play games and uh, or engage in activities that help uh, kids focus their attention, often break down uh, directions and provide them step by step model and pr pr practice effective strategy with Simon Says or other uh, games that you might be familiar and provide feedback and positive uh, reinforcement uh, to the students that you are working with. So here are some suggestions for getting the child's uh, attention in, uh, in following directions. Um, and to clearly limit the distractions that uh, might be pulling a students' attention away uh, from following that direction. Here are some things to look for. Um, what are, and that you might pick up if uh, the students are having a difficulty in following uh, directions. Successful strategies include repeating the, the direction or the question to yourself, uh, targeting in and eliminating options, drawing on your past experiences, verbalizing. I do this myself sometimes when I need to uh, do something that's unfamiliar, to walk myself through it, to repeat it to myself. Um, uh, to break down the task and to emphasize the key uh, words were uh, less successful strategies were confusing uh, the concept terms such as uh, before and after or focusing in on only part of the direction uh, or focusing on getting pulled by a particular uh, a picture or item that's being presented um, and focusing in on that irrelevant uh, uh, aspect. So here are some useful uh, ideas for when plan uh, presenting a, an instruction and, uh, and thinking about the characteristics of the direction uh, that you are presenting and uh, reviewing the errors that are, are made to understand that. So I don't have uh, the opportunity to go through all of these items that are presented in this particular uh, uh, slide deck, but uh, you'll have the opportunities to review them for uh, yourselves. And you certainly wanna be able to chart progress uh, for uh, the young people. Uh, there's a, uh, another slide deck that I hope uh, we will, uh, will be presented to you that um, uh, will have 
uh, additional information on it that relates uh, the importance of uh, basic concepts in, for children who are presenting uh, needs such as uh, speech and uh, language difficulty. There are a number of dissertations that detail these areas and it's not presented on this uh, particular uh, reference list, but another reference list that we'll need to provide for you for kids who are on the autistic spectrum um, disorder. Uh, and there's a, uh, and, and naming is particularly important for these students so that students learn to not only see uh, an object, but to name it and to be able to name it spontaneously. Um, there are dissertations available for the uh, instrument for uh, the heart of uh, hearing um, population and for the visually impaired. And the test is available in raised form versions through the American uh, Printing House for the Blind. I know our, our time is more limited at this point, and I want to be able to answer some of the, the questions that uh, you might have, as well as to be able uh, to uh, provide you these uh, additional references for special populations. Are there questions that I need to be responding to? Hi, Dr. Bam. Yes, we do have a couple of questions that we can answer live if we have time. Um, one of the questions that came through was, do you have any suggestions for teaching concepts related to feelings? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I can feel, um, first of all, it's, can you recognize feelings if you uh, see emoji, let's say, of a smiling face or a crying face or whatever? Or um, can you um, uh, see a picture of a student who is really happy and excited or one who's feeling uh, sad and, and so forth? So one can, um, or reading stories uh, to kids where uh, someone is really, really happy when something happens or reviewing a sports event that might be of interest to the kid and how the player feels if they make a home run or if they strike out. Um, so, using those everyday experiences. And then it's how you feel. And when you feel really angry, or if you feel really sad, and there are, are programs that are available uh, to help children um, uh, uh, deal with those feelings um, and, uh, and where they can sit down or they can get into a quiet place or they can um, talk to someone else and who might help them feel better. There are, there are many procedures that are helpful in, in, in helping children uh, develop their emotions. Um, and, uh, and, you know, some of the same steps that we talked about in terms of learning concepts are some of the same ones. You can uh, work with a doll or a puppet and how they felt and and so forth. Uh, and in or any toy or object of interest that might be uh, important to the child. It's you know when you're really really thirsty and there's no water nearby and then oh you. Uh, someone, your mom or your caregiver gives you uh, something to drink. Um, 
how it feels. It feels really good or I'm really sad that the toy broke. So there are many, many ways that um, these concepts uh, uh, can be worked with and that are important uh, for uh, these young people going from the, the, the most concrete and related to that uh, young person to the much more abstract uh, to how a character in a story is feeling or uh, and so forth. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Bame. I, I know we this hour has just flown by. Um, so thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you all for who attended the webinar today. If we did not answer your question live, please type it in the form that popped up and we will get back to you. Um, so thanks all and have a good afternoon.